When me and Joy were like thinking about this topic, we were talking a lot about how language in the queer space has changed. So, like, just buzzwords that are very much not allowed to be said now that were acceptable then and, like, how that has changed in terms of intersectionality now. There are some words I'm sure you all know that were very acceptable um, back then than now. Maybe even the word fag was like, I don't know how acceptable that was back then to now. Some of my friends like to call each other that as a play, whereas before that was um, not acceptable at all. So, like, has language evolved as time has changed? Do you feel, like, Matt and uh, Megan, do you feel, like, left out in terms of, like, oh, I don't, like, I don't know what to say anymore? Like, if I talk to these younger people, what I think is acceptable to me might come off across wrong so like how has your experience with language been in terms of intersectionality and then queerness and your understanding of it now um yeah i think it's really great that we're all uh learning and growing and evolving new language um i think when i was young we didn't even have words for a lot of things that we do today and if you don't have the words it's really hard for you to to be that thing because the language really limits our experience um, for instance, when I first stumbled upon the words NB, demigirl, non-binary, I just felt this immediate recognition. I went, oh, that's a word for me. Like, I always used to call myself a female man because that was the closest I could come to something that felt right. So I was like, woohoo, there's a word for me. This is, this is great. I think if you have had a word thrown at you as a slur, then why not reclaim it? It's yours. If someone's telling me I can't use the word queer, I'm going to get pretty wound up about that because that's a word that I feel really comfortable with. Yeah. Um, I think also just the way that we use words is constantly, we're constantly learning. Like as soon as I heard about that point of conversation, my mind went to the days of Girlesque, the strip club. And um, I used to do the artwork and the flyers for Girlesque. And often those flyers would say, uh, women and trans. And I can see that that was an attempt at inclusivity, but nowadays it comes across really cringy and not, not right at all. So, yeah, I think we're constant, constantly learning. And the other day I heard an expression which would have been perfect for those posters, which was A, B, C, D, anybody but cis dudes. And I was like, <laughs> that's, that's what we were trying to say, but we just, we didn't have the words for it. I think for me, like, English is so weird. Like, no offense if that's like your main thing, because it's also my main thing. Um, but it was really hard to find a way for me to like, connect myself to why English words, to how I felt connected to my transness and my culture. Um, and I think when I was younger and I was, you know, around community back home, there was like one old uncle who like took me aside and was like, it's okay. Like you have a yoga spirit, which is like a woman's spirit. And that for me was like the way that culture kind of used the tools that it had at that time, which was like English, um, as well as like local Noongar words to kind of encapsulate what my transness felt like. And I think at the moment, an interesting part of community now is the word queer. And we have like older aunties and uncles who don't want queer to be used. Like they're just like, that's, an interesting term and it's it's so hard because I remember I was at an event and some like politician person came up to me and was like I think it's so lovely that you identify as an Aboriginal person but I just do wish you didn't call yourself queer because like why would you use that and I'm like you do understand what Aboriginal meant when it was first came to this country and like how that was derogatory and gross and we've reclaimed like reclaimed that so like why can you not understand that we're reclaiming queer like how do you not see them as points of reclamation other than you being queerphobic like right like and so I think language is really interesting especially for First Nations peoples where like language is already introduced and like culturally there are some people who speak their language there are some people and so already that's hard enough to kind of reintroduce language in but I think it's changing it's adapting it's becoming more inclusive but it's about like walking in hand with the older peoples in community to kind of remove the stigma that they had to first-hand experience when that term was used. Yeah, and like we all know that like when the girls get together and the dolls get together, like 
there are words that get thrown around that we would like full like throat punch someone for saying to us if we weren't just with like you know our community and it's a point of intersection right it's like it's not just reclaimed by us but it's reclaimed because we exist in an intersection in which it was once painful for yeah Matt do you have any thoughts um I've I'm pretty much a loose-lipped bogan, so my language is often really bad. <laughs> you can ask any of my close friends that pull me up all the time. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I think that, uh, like, reclamation is, like, this constant cycle that keeps going around and there's more words to reclaim and there's uh, words to, that fall away. And I think it's a really beautiful uh, cyclical journey. Um, I, I, I think that... Um, the making the mistakes of using language is the only way that that changes as well. So I think that it's really important to, uh, you know, allow for those mistakes. I think it's also really important to allow for, and this is something that I've been personally involved in many times, is is performance and comedy and and uh, you know I think that some of the the most uh, precious moments of me learning shit was from fucking up massively in public. And like, thankfully, it was before the internet, so it's not recorded. <laughs> but a lot of people in this room know exactly what I mean. <laughs> but I, yeah, yeah, I think that evolution can only happen when people fuck up. And so I think that as as scary as it is to fuck up, I think that it shouldn't be so scary anymore. Unfortunately, a lot of people really, really, really have this fear of it, and I think it stops people from doing shit that's interesting.